<laughs> if anybody knows Joe, you know he's crazy, and that's pretty much it. But uh, I think it's a, uh, I don't know, maybe control madness. Um, it, it, it. Celtics practice notebook. Chris Tapps Porzingis progresses. Drew Holiday talks Mazzella's craziness. Peyton Pritchard reflects on increased minutes. Celtics blog. Our box center, Boston. After a couple of days off, the Celtics practiced on Sunday morning, still awaiting their Eastern Conference Finals opponent. It's become a common theme now. The Celtics play the waiting game for a few days in between rounds. They practice while not knowing who their next opponent is going to be, and instead focus inwards on their own habits and mentalities. Here's what you need to know from Sunday's practice. Chris Tapps Porzingis gets in a rigorous bike workout, but no substantive update. There's still no formal injury update on Chris Tapps Porzingis, who strained his soleus almost three weeks ago. ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski reported that Porzingis has been ramping up his on-court play and could return sometime this series barring any setbacks, but he'll most likely miss the first two games at TD Garden. Joe Mazzella declined to provide any specifics on Porzingis' timeline at practice, and when asked if he's optimistic that Porzingis will return this series, Mazzella simply said, I feel like I'm an optimistic person in general. Mazzella echoed holiday sentiment on Porzingis' drive to return. He's working hard every single day to make as fast of a recovery as he can, Mazzella said. Drew Holiday compared Joe Mazzella's lectures on mindset and detail to being in a school session in one of the most entertaining moments of Sunday's practice scrums. You go with it, you go with the craziness, Holiday said. He honestly makes you lock in because it's so different. You definitely have to pay attention to the things that he says. Sometimes he might talk kind of fast, and he might talk through something, and you kind of have to be like wait, wait, slow down. Really locking in like that helps me, because it really makes me go back and be like what did he say, this is what we want to do. Kind of like a, I don't know, school session or something like that, to really study what we want to do and really just want to be the best at it. We're so talented, and I think our biggest step has been. How do we mentally bridge that gap with our talent? Pritchard said. If we become mentally as strong as we are talented, then we're really dangerous. So, I think that's what we've really been harping on, and we've been growing on. Peyton Pritchard reflects on the increased opportunity this postseason presents. Last season, Peyton Pritchard hardly got any minutes during the Celtics' run to the Eastern Conference Finals. This year, he's been the top minute getter off the bench, playing 22.8 minutes a night. Safe to say Pritchard is excited that the team is back in the ECF. It's a great honor, Pritchard said. This is where we want to be every year, playing for a championship. So, we're just looking forward to this test ahead. In the Eastern Conference semifinals against the Cleveland Cavaliers, Pritchard averaged 11.2 points on 52.6% from the field, and throughout this playoff run, Pritchard is shooting 42.9% from three points. At practice, reflected on what it was like to not play last postseason, and how it only inspired him to work harder. When you're in the playoffs, you're watching so many great players play, and performances during these games are unbelievable. So, as frustrating as it might be not to play, it's like, you're watching this, it's motivating. I remember being a kid growing up, and you watch an NBA game. You watch a player, and you're like, wow. And then my first instinct was like, I want to go to the gym. So, last year when I was watching these games and I wasn't playing, it hurt but also motivated me to come in the next day. I put in my work and prepared for the future, not knowing.